Whoever, I was thinking like, who is the person here who has more Twitter followers than anybody else? Who has more than 10,000? Awesome. Who has more than 20,000? Um, Gabir, there's not many people from Cairo who can come to McTeague's, but we can still invite them. 30,000? Okay, we hit out. Yes. Yes, awesome. <laughs> anyway, so people should tweet that out. It's McTeague Saloon on Polk Street. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to Andrew McLaughlin and Yvette Alberting Tim from Witness and whatever, <laughs> and whatever, uh, both on the access board to wrap up the day. Thank you very much. So this is the end of the day. Um, what we thought we would do to wrap the day up is um, reflect for a few minutes on what's changed from the last time we did RightsCon. So two years ago, uh, roughly speaking, we were here in this facility doing uh, the first version of the Human Rights, uh, Silicon Valley Human Rights Conference. And uh, a lot of things are different two years later. And we also thought maybe we would project forward two years from now and uh, talk about what we'd like to see. So, um, so Yvette. What strikes you that's different uh, in 2014 compared to two years ago? So, Andrew, <laughs> I asked one person what's, dif what's really different this year, and they said a lot of the action is happening in the hallways, particularly those people who couldn't get into the actual room. So maybe a little bit of that's still reflected right now. But I think one of the things that's different is that it used to be the Silicon Valley, the, the, the Human Rights Conference, the Silicon Valley Human Rights Conference, and it became RightsCon. I think that's actually a very, very um, symbolic for the fact that people, it's more rights-based. We moved from the abstract into talking about real-life situations, how are specific technology decisions affecting people daily who are trying to affect change. I think that's a different conversation. Yeah, so I would agree with that. And I would say, um, I would say that one phrase you just don't hear this year is internet freedom. Yeah. So, you know, two years ago in 2012, that was the focus of the conference. We were talking about internet freedom as a sort of abstract notion of free flows of information, absence of censorship, and now we're very much talking about uh, individual rights and threats uh, to individuals, the role that companies can play in either contributing to or resisting those threats, um, and uh, the nature of the technologies that you can use to protect yourself. Uh, it's a very different conversation. Broadly speaking, two years ago, we were very focused on censorship. Censorship was viewed as the core threat. Two years later now, particularly post all of these dumps of uh, documents and all of the accompanying revelations about uh, surveillance activities by democratic governments, um, we are talking about uh, uh, privacy and surveillance as the kind of like core issue, the core cluster, the core set of threats. Um, and, and broadly speaking, I think we've moved from a much more simplistic narrative about good guys and bad guys. You know, uh, last time around we were talking about the uh, 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 Green Revolution in Iran, we were talking about the uh, uh, Great Firewall in China. We were talking about those kinds of broad uh, and essentially indefensible systems of censorship. Now we're talking about a much more complex narrative about a fight for the health of a complex ecosystem uh, where democratic governments do good and evil, where they both um, uh, contribute to the development of the internet as, as many uh, of our governments have, and at the same time work actively to undermine um, the security pr uh, protections um, that we have believed we could rely on. Um, and so that's a very interesting change, actually. I think it's quite significant. It's very palpable to me, anyway. Yeah, and I, I believe that um, with that comes the realization that there are many actors. And what's been, I think, very encouraging in this today, that we would hope everybody would continue to do tomorrow, is the direct and open, feisty, as I've noticed, conversations between the different actors in the space. And for me, as a human rights activist, um, it's really important to understand and to see that happen when uh, an, somebody who's maybe directly affected by a policy that one of the big technology companies actually has put in place can have that immediate conversation. So I think that's a huge opportunity we have here. Uh, I would say to the governments and the technology companies and to some of the funders, when is the last time you actually had a direct conversation with someone whose rights um, are directly affected by technologies or by uh, repressive regimes, and you were able to actually do it right here um, at the Rights Con. So that's a great thing to do. Yeah, so from two years ago, the question was, who are you? And now two years later, it's what are we doing together? What can we do together? Um, uh, 
I think it's also striking that two years ago, we, were, we really struggled to try to get companies to show up. I mean, we spent a lot of time basically like lobbying people that we knew at tech companies to actually show up. And this time around, two years later, you can see, I think, 18 companies are doing transparency reports, uh, which is a huge shift. Um, we see uh, people picking up the phone and calling and saying, like, can we get on a panel, um, which, uh, which I think is neat. Um, and, you know, one, if I could make one um, sort of opinionated ideological sort of uh, appeal, um, one of the things that I think is so palpable this year is that compared to two years ago, when the general rhetoric of this conference was, you know, internet is good, internet brings freedom, uh, internet makes people, you know, uh, better connected and better able to realize their potential, et cetera, um, now we see internet alone can actually screw you uh, if you don't know what you're doing and if you're not careful. And this is, a, I think, a really important note to people in the room or listening uh, uh, on the internet um, who are funders because one of the things that strikes me is that uh, large foundations and corporations that are providing funding to well-meaning organizations very often um, uh, just provide cash or access to technology and they don't really do anything to help those groups and those organizations uh, protect themselves. Um, and you very often see a dynamic where, uh, like let's say, uh, like a women's rights group uh, in, uh, I don't know, Zambia, an environmental group in Bangladesh, will um, find itself with new funding, access to new technology, a bunch of new laptops, some smartphones. They start to use them, and without any um, uh, training, education, or assistance at reducing their risks, understanding the threats, and protecting themselves, they're actually worse off with the technology than they would have been otherwise because they're so easily betraying the content of their communications, the nature of their networks, the people that they're, um, the identities of the people that they're in contact with. And so a footnote point, one of the implications, I think, of this year's conversations is that uh, it's basically foundational malpractice to be funding organizations without also helping them to secure themselves online. Um, and footnote. Uh, so two years from now, what would you like to see? What do you think would be a good uh, rights con? I, I think what would be a great rights con is if the conversations that have happened here today and will happen over the next two days actually led to key action points and partnerships that have changed, moved the needle on in terms of rights and in terms of internet freedoms. Yeah, and I guess That's two years task. from now, I'd like to be able to look back and see all of the ways in which the various actors um, that are here yeah. uh, uh, collaborated very tactically on the ground um, to produce uh, greater awareness of security, um, better tools for the realization of rights, and, uh, uh, and so forth. So with that, on behalf of the Board of Access, let me just say, first of all, thank you all for being here. A huge thank you to the staff of Access, Brett Solomon and your team. You guys have done a great job. This was a hell of a day. Thank you, good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. And at the bar.